Hello, my name is David Klebanov and I'm a leader in Cisco SD-WAN Technical Marketing Organization. So today we're going to provide a demonstration for a feature we call Cloud OnRAM for IIS. IIS stands for Infrastructure as a Service. So what is this feature about? This is the ability for the SD-WAN fabric to be extended into the public cloud environments such as AWS or Microsoft Azure. And by extending the SD-WAN fabric into those public cloud environments, we can extend all of the benefits of the SD-WAN fabric, such as security, segmentation, QoS, application of routing, right there into the doorstep of those uh, cloud environments. So let's see how it's done. This is the demonstration topology that we're going to look at. Some things to, uh, to pay attention to. It's everything is going to be centered on the vManage. The cloud on-ramp for IIS is a feature which is highly automated. And in fact, the vManage tool provides the entire end-to-end -end orchestration and deployment of that feature. So in the vManage, we need to provide the AWS account information So vManage can perform API calls to the AWS environment and make all of the set settings that we had identified in the wizard happen. Right? So everything is vManage and that's what we're going to do. Now when the script, when this wizard goes and performs this API calls against the AWS infrastructure. In this case, we're going to demonstrate on AWS, but it's identical for Microsoft Azure as well. So when it's going to get instantiated, and we're going to see uh, how, that, uh, how that happens, what gets instantiated is the gateway VPC, which in fact is a presence of customers' SD-WAN network inside an AWS region. Inside the gateway VPC, we have two WAN Edge devices that are taken from the marketplace. They're instantiated within this gateway VPC in different availability zones to make sure that we have the high availability and redundancy. We are also instantiate the VGW, which is the VPN gateways for, or the virtual gateways that um, exist in the host VPCs where the actual resources are. So these resources are the resources deployed in AWS before we even started this cloud on-rem setup. That's our day zero. And then we're going to stretch this set of IPsec connections with BGP routing on top of it and redistribute BGP into OMP in order to make sure that we have uh, the reachability for the subnets that exist in host VPCs throughout the SD-WAN fabric. So what we get in the end is we get this end-to-end -end connectivity, direct connectivity, from branches, campuses, and other SD-WAN locations, all the way through the SD-WAN fabric into the gateway VPC and straight into the host VPC resources. So really think about this as direct-to-cloud connectivity. So let's take a look at how it gets executed. So this is the vManage that we're going to use for this demonstration, right? Under the configuration, we have a setting called cloud on-ramp. So we can click on the cloud on-ramp. In this particular setup, we already have some of the cloud on-ramp configurations. As you can see, we we'll already have a setting for AWS, and we already have a setting for Microsoft Azure. But we're going to create a new one, because the most important thing is to see how the wizard gets executed. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a new instance, and we are prompted, are we going to create an instance for Amazon Web Services or for Microsoft Azure? In this particular demonstration, we're interested in the Amazon Web Services. We have two ways to provide authentication something which is called an IAM role, and something which is, which is used through API key and the secret key. So what we're going to do, we're going to choose the key, which is the default option. Now we need to provide the API key and the secret key. Now those are the credentials that I mentioned earlier that are required. 
if the person who is administering the vManage is not the same person that is uh, responsible for cloud deployment, then the cloud deployment person has to provide those credentials to the person administering the vManage because these are the credentials that are coming from AWS. They have to be provided on vManage so vManage can uh, perform those API calls. So let me quickly provide the API key and the secret key for the account that we're going to use. Once we log in inside the, uh, the account, we are presented with selection of a region. As you, as you recall, we mentioned in the, uh, in the intro slide is that the, um, the VPC gateway is created on a per region basis. In fact, if you look at his, here on the right hand side, we have this really nice representation to tell you which stage of the configuration you're in. As you can see, we have three steps in here. We have the step for the gate VPC, and sometimes we interchangeably call this transit VPC and gate VPC. Depends where this term comes from. So if you're familiar with uh, AWS terminology, they call this a transit VPC. So sometimes we interchangeably use transit and gate VPC uh, when we describe this uh, a cloud on RAM for IS feature. So there's a first step is a transit VPC, then there will be, or a, or a gate VPC, then a host VPC, and then they interconnect between. So it's a three-step process, right? Now, the first step is select the region where we are instantiating this gateway or transit VPC, right? So we're going to select this, and as you can see, we have a choice of AWS regions that we can deploy, uh, deploy in, right? So let's say I'm going to choose US West 2. Now I have to provide the name for the gate to VPC. So this is a name. So I'm going to provide this and say AWS Gateway VPC. I need to select the version of the WAN Edge device that is going to be provisioned in a gate to VPC. If you recall, this is taken from the marketplace, right? So let me choose a version. Now I have to say what is the size of this instance that I'm going to provision, right? If you're familiar with AWS uh, terminology, this is the size of the instance that this VEdge, this WAN Edge cloud is going to get instantiated in. So I'll choose something and you have to really make sure that it's appropriate for the performance characteristics that you're looking for. Now we have two devices. These are the two WAN Edge devices that are going to be inserted into the um, into the um, uh, gateway VPC, right? So you have to be licensed for these two devices, which means that you have to have the WAN Edge list updated with two devices, and you have to generate the bootstrap parameters for those devices. All of that is done under the configuration menu and devices. So you have to make sure that you have those two devices in the system. You have to make sure that you have generated the bootstrap parameters, and you have to make sure that you have a configuration template that is attached to them. So these are prerequisites. Now, the AWS gateway that I, uh, I can choose is this, and the second one is the other one. Obviously, if I had more devices, my list would be longer, and I get to choose which one, but for this, uh, for this particular demonstration, I have uh, I have two devices that I made available for you to, uh, to license, uh, to be licensed to use inside uh, the, um, this setup. Now there's also this advanced setting in here. There's two things I can, uh, I can specify in here. One is the transit VPC subnet. Normally this is not something that you would modify, but you could modify if you wanted to, right? Uh, the way it's used is that it's not used for any overlay routing for the host VPCs. It's mostly used for traffic that is originated by the WAN Edge devices in the gate VPC themselves. So for example, communication to the AAA server, NTP, um, SNMP traps, things like that, right? So if you have those services that are uh, operational on the WAN Edge device itself in the gate VPC, then it may become important because if you have multiple gate VPCs, you don't want overlapping IP addresses there. Mostly, that's not the case, so you don't have to specify anything in here. Additionally, you have the SSH public key. 
So if you want to perform authentication, if you want to SSH into those WAN Edge devices for some reason to perform low level troubleshooting or whatnot, and you want to use your public key for authentication, you can do that. Your public key uh, can get uh, uploaded into the AWS account. And then in here, you can select the, that public key to be used for the uh, SSH authentication into those WAN Edge devices inside the Gateway VPC. Again, both of these are advanced and optional. So I'm not going to specify anything, right? Then I'm going to say, proceed to discovery and mapping, right? So this is, as you can see, the system nicely tells me that I am done with providing all the information that is needed to create this transit VPC and to instantiate two WAN Edge devices in that gateway VPC. So I've provided enough information for the wizard to complete what it needs to be doing. Now the next one is the host VPCs. Okay, so for that, I need to select which account I would like this to be performed in, right? So I can select, we support multiple accounts. So if you have multiple accounts, you can do that. You can select an account and say, discover host VPCs. Multiple host VPCs were discovered. So those host VPCs is where the actual resources are. That's where the actual um, hosts are, VMs are in AWS. You can see the name of the host VPC. You can see the host VPC ID, right, which is, comes from AWS. And you see the CIDR block. CIDR block is what gets assigned in, as the IP subnet for that host VPC in AWS. All of these parameters are read from AWS through the credentials that we've provided to vManage. So vManage is interfacing with AWS to pull this data presented here so we can make a selection and see which one of the host VPCs we actually like to include in this setup, right? So I have a choice to select multiple. So let's say I selected these two. Then I would say next, right? As you can see, another check mark appeared. So now I have included the host VPCs that I wanted in this setup. So I've done the transit gateway VPC. I've done the host VPCs. What remains is link them together and the system nicely prompts you here. Yes, now let's provide the linkage. So what I do is I select the VPCs I want to link and I have this map VPCs button in here. Now it's very straightforward. It says, great, what are you mapping this to? So I'm mapping this into this gateway VPC, right? Which VPNs would you like this mapping to occur? And route propagation. So there's really nice information button in here. So if you want to click on it, if you want to know what it is, enabling route propagation automatically propagates routes to the host VPC's routing table, right? So it depends if you want to um, enable that or don't enable that, you can just disable that. And then just the default route is going to be sent to the, um, to the host VPCs. So it depends if you want to advertise more information to the host VPCs or if you want just the default route to be sent out. So let's keep this as a default disable. Map VPCs. That's it. We are done with the process. As you can see, everything is checkmarked. We're all done. The next thing is after I click the save and complete button, vManage is going to initiate the API calls and it's going to perform the configuration that we've done so far. And what it's going to do, again, it's going to initiate and create this transit or gateway VPC. It's going to create the VGWs. It's going to create this IPsec connections. It's going to create the BGP 
setup, make sure that there is a BGP peering between, that I can learn the CIDR blocks that are in those host VPCs that I've decided to add, right? Again, for VPN segmentation, we selected VPN as a segment, right? So what it means is that this when edge devices inside the transit VPC, they're actually part of an SD-WAN network. So if I have a branch office somewhere in here, and it has a certain connections to the LAN, what we call a service connection, service site connections, and this can belong to different VPNs. So I can have VPN 1, VPN 2, VPN 3, etc. So by defining the VPN segment in here, I've basically said that I'm going to make these IPsec connections in a context of VPN 1. So the VPN 1 user throughout the fabric, wherever those users are, is going to be allowed to communicate and this routing information about the CIDR blocks is going to get propagated throughout the sd one fabric in the context of VPN1. So VPN1 user connectivity can be done through the sd one fabric to the gateway VPC or the transit VPC over the standard-based IPsec tunnels towards the host VPCs. Okay, so that's now not completed. We'll cancel out. Let's instead take a look at an existing setup that has already been completed before. So as you can see, we have transit VPCs, which are the transit slash gateway VPCs, and then we have the host mapped, uh, uh, mapped host VPCs, right? So I can click on each one of those. For example, transit VPC, it actually going to tell me under the transit VPCs, here's the transit, uh, transit uh, VPC. Uh, I have two V-Edge clouds in it, one edge devices in it. There's the CIDR block that I did not modify. Here's the size of the instance that I had, to, uh, I had to choose from. So all these things that should look familiar to you because that's what we provided when we were creating the, uh, when we were creating the, uh, launching the wizard, right? So transit VPCs, but also the host VPCs some host VPCs that we had decided to include the account they're coming from, right? Which of the transit VPCs they're mapped to and their status. Are they up, down, and VPN that they belong to, right? So all of these things that we've just gone through, at the end of the run, you have this nice dashboard for all of that cloud on RAM for, for IIS deployment. Now, what else can you see? So if I go into monitor and I go into network, I can see in here these two devices. These are the VH cloud, right? I can see the type VH cloud. These are the WAN edge routers that got instantiated in that gateway VPC. I called it gateway VPC AWS Gateway East. That's what I chose for this particular system, right? You can also see other ones for Azure, right? We didn't show you the Azure, but it's exactly the same process. And at the end, you can see that I really have this nice environment where I have remote site, data center, regional hub, cloud destinations, Right? So all of this is just part of one SD-WAN fabric. It's very nice. So let me drill into the one of the devices right? and go into this real-time view where I can run real-time queries. So what I wanted to show you is that under this real-time queries, I can look at the IPsec, so I can look at IPsec IC sessions. These are the IPsec IC sessions that got established between the 
WAN Edge devices, the VH clouds in the gateway VPC, and the VGWs in the host VPCs. You can see there's four. Why are there four? Because this particular um, WAN Edge device has, um, has a connection to two host VPCs, right? And each one of those connections is actually two IPsec tunnels. So that's why you see in here, basically, two VGWs, one for host VPC one and one for host VPC two. That's why you see four of them, right? Obviously, if I had more, if I linked more host VPCs, I would get more IPsec tunnels. What I can also see in here, what I can also see in here, as you can see, BGP, right? We mentioned that BGP gets established. So what I can do is I can say, show me BGP neighbors. I know there is not many neighbors, so I'm not going to filter anything. So do not filter. Four BGP neighbors, right? That is the four BGP neighbors that got established over those IPsec tunnels that we saw earlier, those IPsec Ike tunnels between the gateway VPC and the, uh, and the host VPCs, right? So as you can see, this whole setup that we talked about came to life just through the interaction of the vManage uh, through the API calls into, um, into AWS. So that concludes our demonstration. So in this demonstration today, we had seen how the cloud on-ramp for IAS feature really allows the um, streamlined deployment of the infrastructure in the public cloud environments such as AWS or Microsoft Azure and the extensibility of the SD-WAN fabric into those public cloud environments alongside with the critical features such as segmentation, uh, quality of service, and multipathing, application routing, etc. So I hope you enjoyed this presentation and have a great day.